nation would speak it unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth he chastened and scourged every son whom he received. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, Each and every day of our life. 
But note this. We have to let God work in our hearts and use the trials to strengthen us. We cannot wall around in self-pity or react against the trials and problems that attack us. We must turn to God. Not Mayday, not Pookie New, well, not Little Bam Bam, not Little Hardcore, but truly turn to our Heavenly Father and ask Him for help and strengthen and allow Him to help us. A small innocent baby who is crippled in an automobile accident by a drunker man is not being chastised or corrected by God. The child has done nothing for which to be chastised. The child is crippled because of a sinful man who followed the path of Satan. The child is crippled because he, he lives in a corruptible world. God loves the child. God will look after the child as the child grows and the child will look to God for help. God will use the child's suffering. God will teach and discipline the growing child to endure more and more, making him stronger and stronger. God will teach the discipline, teach and discipline the growing child to trust and depend upon Christ for more and more and to fellowship and commune with Christ more and more. God will use the endurance and faith of growing the child as a testimony to the love and care of God as a testimony to, to the living reality and delivering power of God that can conquer all the trials and sorrows of life, even that of death. Two, when we fail and cave into the trials and sin, God lets us reap what we have sown. We bear the results of our sin, but even through sin and failure, God loves us. He loves and works with us. Convicting us by his spirit to repent. He then uses the suffering of the sin to stir us to think of him and our failures. God takes the suffering that are caused by trials and sin and uses them to correct and discipline us. This is the key statement, and it is what we must always remember when dealing with all bad and evil things upon earth. God does not cause it. We cause it. And the corruptible world in which we live causes it. And the our enemy, Satan, causes them. God loves us and has nothing in mind for us except love and the very best of everything. Therefore, God takes all the bad and evil, all the suffering of bad and evil, and he uses it all to make us think about him and our failures. He uses the suffering caused by sin and trial to correct and discipline us, to stir us to draw near to trust, depend, and love Him, and to live like we should. Amen. And as we unfold this text, there is three points. My first point, do not despise discipline. And here in the fifth verse, he says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto the children. My sons, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Yeah. And we see here despise, the Hebrew word is menomigoreo. The word means to storm, to make little of, to treat lightly. When we are being taught, disciplined, or corrected, there is always a danger of despising it, scoring it, making light of it and treating it too lightly. Uh -huh. And too often we, we pay little attention to the discipline and correction of God. Yeah. To the tug and pull of the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. To the little consequences and suffering of our hearts. To the little things that happen to us. Right. And as a result, we continue right on in our little irresponsible behaviors and sin. The little flaws of sins get bigger and bigger until finally the root came in and the consequences involve so much destruction and suffering that we can no longer ignore them. So why do we suffer so much in this life? 
because of our irresponsibilities and sins. Because we do not need the discipline and correction of God when we first begin to act irresponsibly. If we heeded the discipline of God, then we could correct our small misbehavior and no big sin would happen. Falling into sin does not condemn anybody, but staying in it does. A visitor at a fishing dock asked an old man who was sitting there, if I were to fall into this water, would I drown? It was a queer way of asking how deep the water was. But the fisherman had a good answer. Now, nah, he said, falling into the water does not drown anybody. It's staying under it that does. The point is this. We are not to despise the discipline of God. Not to scorn it or take and treat it lightly. We are to heed it. As we do, life will be much easier and stronger and much more triumphant and victorious. Second Chronicles 24, 19 says, Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give in. Proverbs 3, 11 through 12 says, My son, do not despise the chastity of the Lord, nor deep debts is his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. My second point, do not faint. Do not faint. The word faint means to give up, to lose heart, to buckle under, to lose courage, to weaken. The trials and suffering of this world can become extremely heavy and painful. Yeah. And sometimes almost too much to bear. And I can remember a few years ago when I went through so much problems, so much trials, and so much tribulation. I didn't understand why I was going through what I was going through. I was ready to throw in the towel. I was ready to give it up. I just didn't care no more. I didn't know why God was allowing me to go through what I was going through. It didn't matter to me anymore. I didn't care. But the rebuking hand of God that convicts us to repent and to correct our behavior becomes almost unbearable. In either case, we are not to faint or give up. We are to turn totally to God in trust and dependence, asking for his help and strength. We have the glorious assurance that he will deliver us victoriously through it all. He will make us stronger and make us a much greater witness for him. God will save us and live within our hearts and lives. Save us both now and eternally. Save us even through death itself so that we may live with him forever and ever in the new heavens and earth. The goal of God's fatherly activity that we may share in his holiness. And this will be a lifetime work. Yeah. C.S. Lewis in his book, The Problem of Pain, encapsulated vividly. God whispers to us in our pleasure, yes. speaks in our conscience, yeah. but shouts in our pain. Yeah. It is his megaphone to rouse the dead world. Yeah. Second Corinthians 4, therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Second Corinthians four sixteen, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Ephesians three thirteen. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. Point three. My last point. Endure the discipline. Yeah. And when God receives us as children of His, He disciplines and even scourges or spankers. And I know a lot of us know about being spanking. My mama used to say, Go out there and get that switch. And back then we had racing tracks. I think I still got a few whips today. Hot wheels. And but they don't spank the kids no more these days. They call them one of them. Why? Because he loves us. God chast chastens us because we are his sons and daughters. That is, his children. We have faults and weaknesses. 
others. But God loves us and wants to stop us from hurting ourselves and from hurting others. He wants us to grow and move through life without as little pain and hurt as possible. And he wants us to become stronger and stronger within our inner person. Therefore, every time we go astray or begin to think under trials and disobedience, God corrects us. The point is this. We are to endure the discipline of God. We are to stand fast against all trials and suffering. We are to become soft to the guidance and urging of the Spirit of God. We are to follow the Word of God and His Spirit. The urging and conviction within our hearts when they are of God. God is disciplining us, teaching and correcting us because He loves us as our Father. He is disciplining us just as a loving Father upon the earth disciplined His child. Matthew 10, 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Amen. Hebrews 12, 7, If ye endure chastening, God will it with you and with son. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Yeah. James 1, 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. As I go to my seat, I thank God for being my father. I thank him for my trials. I thank him for my endurance. I thank him for my suffering. I thank him for my sickness. I thank him for my tribulation. 